This is a case study about a 21 year old patient, the upper central incisor on the right hand side of the patient and the left of the image with extensive root end resorption. The left hand tooth also has root end resorption but this tooth is reacting vital as it should. Also note that at the tip of the central incisor there is also something that looks like a uh, calcification. Dental history that's applicable is more than one attempt at orthodontics. The, during the first attempt she had a traumatic event on the upper in centrals and that is what's causing the external resorption. There wasn't really a way to keep access to a minimum because of the immature nature of the root. Accessing the tooth I stumbled upon what actually looked like vital tissue but it is not pulp, strictly speaking it's pulp like tissue but I think this is more a granulomatous type of tissue in reaction to chronic irritation. I used the combination of hand instruments, careful hand instrumentation, I didn't want to file the root surface as well as chemical debridement to rid the pulp space of the granulomatous tissue. Electronic apex location was not effective at all so I had to resort to radiographs only and even that wasn't as simple as you can see there the instrument hooking against that calcification but it wasn't hard to bypass at all I could uh, just aim it towards the distal and we could easily bypass that denticle it turned out to be a denticle after we heavily magnified it. I think this is 21 times magnification that's why the Im the feed is so shaky and that is also why it's not always in the middle of the screen. Apologies for that. What I'm doing now is to remove the last little bit of that uh, what I suspect is granulomatous tissue from the apical portion of the tooth just to the mesial of the denticle. I was quite tempted to attempt revascularization, but as you can see, I am physically probing the alveolar bone at the extent of the root, and there's hardly any bleeding. For those of you that's following the literature on pulp regeneration, would know that one of the many challenges is the lack of a sufficient blood supply to sustain the revascularization at attempt into the pulp space. Also because the Hertzvik epithelial root sheet has been long gone, as I said earlier, the patient is 21 at this point. And that is a contraindication for revascularization or to stimulate root end closure. So I used a bioactive cement for obturation. With a blunderbuss apex, I exclusively use the negative pressure irrigation. What you see now is the suction tip with a normal irrigation needle fitted to uh, insert it to length and then using the syringe that's under positive pressure to simply fill up the pulp space relying on the vacuum that's lower than atmospheric pressure to spread the irrigant throughout the root space in a very safe way. I decided to remove the denticle because one can never be sure what a random couple of odonto blasts inside it would be up to once the treatment has been completed. It could also be vascularized and this endodontic intervention might upset that and create a little ball of necrotic vascular tissue within this denticle. I used an ultrasonic U-file tip on a very low energy setting to chip it off the root surface. It came off the root surface quite readily but what's interesting was how tightly it was attached into the alveolar bone and removing that was a bit like using chopsticks to remove weed from between two paving slabs. As daft as it might sound, it will also be very very frustrating. One lesson learned for me personally would be to invest in a set of micro debriders by Mylifer. I think that would have worked a treat to remove this promptly, making it a lot easier and faster. After the removal of the denticle, I used ethylene diamine tetracetic acid as well as sodium hypochlorite as a final rinse as I usually do and started the obturation process. 
the bioactive cement that I used in this case was tricalcium silicate in the form of septodons biodentine uh, using it as total obturation. Extrusion of the cement is not a huge concern but it's even less so in this case because we didn't have a huge void at the root end. It was very controlled uh, replacement resorption and we had a healthy bone barrier to compact against. And although biodentine is not really known for its radio opacity, we could see the result nice and clearly. Thank you for watching.